Hello all, Rising Ape here. I make a lot of Zoo Tycoon videos, but it's very rare that I get to talk about a new iteration in the Zoo Tycoon franchise. So today I'm very happy to be sitting down with one of the owners of Treaser Games, Samuel. They're making a brand new Zoo Tycoon game in conjunction with Microsoft. So we're going to go through it, talk about it a little bit, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So hello, Samuel. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, I'm also excited. Well, thank you very much. First off, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, the company, your partner, just uh, kind of who you are. Yeah, so I'm Samuel, one of the half or let's say co-founders of uh, Treaser. It's like um, a publisher from Switzerland. And we're very much focused about uh, publishing environmentally friendly products that are FSC certified and use as uh, little plastic as possible. And um, the other half would be Mark. And I studied biology and uh, Mark studied business and administration. And yeah, he's kind of a very big zoo fan. We both played Zoo Tycoon when we were small, but I think he's kind of the uh, big zoo fan. He made his master and um, bachelor thesis about zoos, about education. And um, yeah, we're already working like four years on our company and the Zoo Tycoon is going to be our uh, sixth Kickstarter campaign. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've got some experience with doing this and getting games out through Kickstarter and everything like that. Absolutely. The first one, maybe just as a side note, the first one um, we published was an evolution card game. It was called uh, Darwin's Choice. And it was also a very thematical game in a sense that, yeah, if you play it, you kind of get the sense how evolution works. And we made then also um, um, uh, an additional version of it uh, with dinosaurs. And then uh, the other products that we made were also puzzles about uh, wildlife. We have like an endangered species collection, um, which we, also sell at WWF Switzerland or WWF uh, Netherlands. Those are a bit our uh, partners, so to say. And um, the last game we published was uh, Pachacuna. It's like a two-player game. Um, was also a really cool project because we worked together with an NGO and uh, each game had then like a handmade Bolivian bag inside. Um, so yeah, we were able to kind of upgrade the game, but on the same time, we were also able to kind of provide something for the NGO, which was really a cool story. So you guys have done this a couple times before. What made you decide that Zoo Tycoon was going to be the next game that you put out? Why did you decide on Zoo Tycoon specifically? So yeah, with all our uh, products, we have a bit of a vision and a line. Uh, they mainly um, focus on wildlife, animals, um, nature, and we always wanted to do like um, a zoo game and it kind of makes sense with also the other themes that we made so far games out. And uh, Mark made like the first prototype when he was very young, like when he was 10 years old, he already made like a zoo game. I mean, it wasn't that good at that time, of course, but the idea also for him was already <laughs> very, <laughs> very much here that he kind of, um, yeah, wants to do like a zoo game at one point. And I remember that also in high school, he had like an art uh, project there. He remade another zoo game. So that idea was still there. And um, yeah, when we started the whole project to do board games, we knew that at one point we want to make a zoo game. But a zoo game is more complicated because we would like to have like a simulation like Zoo Tycoon. Because me and Mark, we both played Zoo Tycoon so much when we were younger. That also heavily influenced our way how we think about the zoo, right? And the simulation. And to do such a game, we knew it's not going to be that easy. So it would not be the first project to tackle. And um, it was just a perfect match. We had this mind of a zoo game. We worked on it. And early on when we um, made the prototypes, we already said, oh, it would be really cool if we can do that together with, uh, with Microsoft, basically, the, the holder of the, of the brand. And yeah, we're super thankful and happy that uh, 
they trust us and that it was able to that we were able to find an agreement and i think it's uh, definitely helped that we try to be as sustainable as possible and that it is our sixth um, project so you were definitely the ones that reached out to microsoft right they didn't come to you yes. you came up with you wanted to do the zoo game you've wanted to do it for a long time and you actually went to microsoft and said hey can we do this was there any uh, conflict or pushback or were they just immediately into it and wanting to see what you guys would make i think we were super lucky because the person we were in contact with was very open-minded uh, liked board games himself and that was that made things much easier um, so i think we also were a bit lucky to be uh, in contact with the right person and of course, you need um, it, it needed a couple of iteration, and we had to discuss together how, uh, yeah, in the end, this agreement could look like. Zoo Tycoon, a simulation game, it seems very difficult to transfer over into the board game medium. I like a lot of tabletop games as well. I know how complicated they can get, um, but I can imagine that trying to turn a computer simulation game into a tabletop game is a huge hurdle um so why don't you just tell us a little bit about the game itself like how does it actually work uh, multiplayer is there any single player option or like what is it like yeah sure um yeah i think our goal when we designed the game was to do like a very thematical experience um not abstract so if you play Zoo tycoon the board game um we want you to really kind of um, feel that it's a uh, zoo simulation, not that there's like some stuff that you think are odd or weird. Um, so I would in general say that the game, the approach and the way you will play it is very thematical. And the goal of the game is basically to have an equilibrium between popularity and conservation. And I don't know, maybe I can show it to you. I hope it works yeah, well with course. the camera. Please. So this is like the scoring board that you have. The yellow one is popularity and the green one is uh, conservation. And the thing is, the more popular your zoo is, the more visitor you have, and then you have more money. And like in real life, more money is good because you have more options. And uh, that makes it um, easier to kind of uh, uh, buying additional um, buildings like food booths and educational centers and so on. And on the other hand, you have conservation, which is um, not really giving you too much back during the game. Um, but the important thing is that the lower of these two values in the end will be your final score. So it's all fun to go the popularity okay. road and to buy and build and do what you like. But if you don't think about conservation, then you will most probably lose. Yeah. Yeah, so you could definitely you could make a super popular game, but or you could make a super popular zoo, but if your conservation level isn't high enough, then somebody who's kind of a little less popular but did really well with the conservation is still going to come out on top because Absolutely. of the combined scores. The hard, yeah, the hard okay. thing about the and, game is to kind of find this uh, really good balance. And uh, maybe yeah, I can also explain some other parts that make the heart of the game. Uh, that will be the animals. Yes, please. Like in Zoo Tycoon as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you have 22 main animals and you have like 12 um, additional animals. Um, but there's like a good mix between animals that are more focused on popularity, um, like the elephant or other animals that are um, endangered and they have more value for conservation. Um, so everything is a bit balanced. And some of the animals are, of course, easier to keep. Some of them are more difficult because they need more space and so on. But yeah, we have these 22 um, main animal species and I can maybe show uh, the elephant. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there's like this yellow, light green and dark green level. And basically that's the needs that the animal has. This is like the group size, the number of shelters. Mm -hmm. This is the free space in the enclosure. And this is the experience which goes up every round. And you put like cubes on where exactly the value is at the moment. So you build an enclosure, enclosure in your own zoo. You have like a board. And if you have like three animals mm -hmm. in that enclosure, you will put like a cube on the three. 
And the animal has like okay. three, these three colors that I showed you are like the happiness level. So this, this is like the yellow happiness level, the light green, a dark green, where it's super happy. But of course, to make an elephant very mm. happy is very difficult and cost intensive. Um, yeah. Basically, the lowest cube on these four needs will determine the overall level of happiness. And the happier an animal is, the more likely it will make offspring. An offspring will make or will give you like a bonus with popularity because everyone would like to see the baby elephant uh, in the zoo in that round where you have offspring. Uh, which and there's some species that you can reintroduce into the wild, um, like the golden lion tamarind, or there's also the northern bald ibis. I can show that one as well. He's maybe not the most prettiest one. That's why he's maybe not that popular. I think people wouldn't maybe go because of him to the zoo. Um, but he has a, he's um, very in the injured in, um, in nature. And that's why he has a lot of values in conservation. And if you make him happy and you are able to have offspring, you can reintroduce them into the wild and generate conservation points in that way. So as I said, each animal has a bit of his own strategy that you can do with him. And uh, yeah, you also don't get, you don't buy the animals. Usually like in games, there's a lot of this buying mechanism and selling mechanism, but that didn't really make sense for a zoo that works differently. You have like a zoo uh, market where all these animals are uh, shown and you have basically some um, cuts or die cuts, like holes in the board that will show um, this paper lying underneath the board. And there ha they have all kinds of values here. So you basically mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. that into the back of here. And with these holes, you can see what at the, what at the moment, what kind of um, sequence of number is there. And that, that uh, kind of displays what's in demand and what's in um, offer from other zoos. This is basically the zoo market. and as I said in the beginning, we didn't want that you can buy and sell um, animals. That's not how it's done. So, okay. Also, so what what controls the market? Then you're changing the position every round. That's you're just moving it around each round, and the values just change. Yes, Is there any exactly. way you can affect the market? Like and here the green one are the one that are in offer and the red one is the one in demands so if you have like offspring and you would okay. like to give away your animal then it's sometimes good that there's like these red values coming up if you need an animal then you're happy that uh, the green value comes because that means that you can take uh, the animal and that makes that not that every game is different because you start on a random position sorry there was like a meeple that just fell down <laughs> <laughs> um, there's basically you start on a random um, position on the zoo market and you change every round uh, and that makes also that there's not this one crazy strategy of animal combination that you're able to beat the others uh, each time because sometimes you just don't know if the animal that you really want is there the next round and you always have to be very flexible in what to choose from what other animal could suit your zoo at the moment the best Okay, yeah, that seems like it would help a lot with replayability, Absolutely. making sure that you're not just doing the same exact thing every single time. So with with multiple players playing all at once, there's not really much like, I can't come in and affect your zoo in any way. It's just how well each of us are playing, what the market gives us, and what the game is giving us at any time to see yeah, who's going to win, right? There's no direct conflict. There there are some places, um, like on the zoo market, uh, you also play like clockwise or counterclockwise if you want. And it is possible that another player takes that animal, that animal that I really want, especially if you're four player, then it's mm. like a bit crowded on the zoo market um, because everyone wants to grab, of course, the one that is best suited for his zoo and often it's the case that you could use that animal too right um, and on the other hand there's like conservation um, programs or projects i have to say which uh, also only one player gets like rewarded um, there's like a set they can maybe also show that that's like the lower part of the zoo market shows you these um, projects 
And the first five mm -hmm. you see here are like um, cooperation with national parks. So if you have a certain set of animals, you will get conservation points. And um, that, of course, is also a bit competitive because some of them give more points and some people might already have an animal out from this, uh, from this set. And then another has maybe also one. So it's also a bit of a race uh, to get this national park cooperation uh, going. So there is um, there hmm, are okay. places where people kind of um, can influence a bit your decision making. And also on the scoring board mm -hmm. that I showed you, when you're like first on the popularity tracker, you will have an extra bonus. Uh, the same goes for the educational score and the conservation score. So you always want to be first to get this special bonus. So there will be um, there will be strategic moments where people really will time their offspring to kind of get higher in popularity for this round um, to kind of beat mm -hmm. you and get you the bonus. But in the end, you're also right in a sense that I cannot like sneak into your zoo and open the doors and everything is running wild. That's not possible. <laughs> um, in the end, you're still kind yeah. of uh, your own manager of, uh, of, of your zoo. So was there anything that you really wanted to implement into the game that you just couldn't quite make work in a board game, <laughs> in a board game <laughs> medium? Um, I think there's there was one thing that kind of came uh, into my mind. I mean, the other thing I already told you, more animals. For me, it's more animals, but we cannot put too many animals mm -hmm. because that's the limitation. Um, but yeah, it would have been fun, of course, to have like an unlimited amount of animals. And the other thing that we were thinking to implement, but we couldn't really find um, like a good way to make it happen without it being too complicated to track is like a lifetime um, of an animal or like the health status of an animal. Um, mm -hmm. We have the happiness and um, that's also kind of the core of the game um, because if you have unhappy animals that will also influence your zoo in different ways. Um, but yeah, the age and the health was just one thing uh, that would just have been one thing too much. Yeah, that seems like it would be a huge part of the game just to juggle that might not actually add much to yes. the enjoyment. So I don't Absolutely. <laughs> I think I'm glad that you got what you got in there. So also with the animals, like how did you I know you wanted some that were more popular and some that were more driven on conservation, but how did you actually choose which animals to put in the game? Because I'll put a list on the screen of everything that you've got in the game. It seems like a, a very uh, different mix of animals than you would normally mm. expect in a zoo game. So what was kind of the, the driving factor behind choosing some of those? Um, I think, yeah, we had to get this, uh, this balance right. I think that's maybe also the biggest task to make this game work well was like the balancing. Uh, it's always easy to have like an idea, but then to kind of work on it and making it really to a final product. I think the last 5%, 5, 10% 5, are the ones that just take up so much more time. And uh, the question mm -hmm. about what animals come into the game was also a question of uh, balancing, like what animal would suit like a lower popularity, something that is maybe not too expensive to keep. Then we have like animals from three different biomes. You have savanna, boreal mountains, and uh, the third one is jungle. Um, so we also wanted to have like a good mix um, of animals of each of these biomes. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's how we ended up with, with these animals. And I also let Mark decide. As I said, he's like the biggest animal fan that I know. And uh, he made me some suggestions and I said, yeah, that's totally fine. And yeah, I mean, if that game works well and we can um, produce it and it has success, then uh, there's also the possibility that we would do like expansions or different versions with additional animals or so. Because there were a lot of animals, of course, that we would have loved to have in the game. But yeah, at one point, we had to say that's enough and it works well with these 22 animals.
with those uh, expansions, do you think you'd kind of follow along with the other uh, installments in the franchise and go kind of a marine side and a dinosaur side as well, add those in? Or do you think it would just be trying to keep as realistic <laughs> of a kind of do as possible? I think it's too early to say that. I think it would be so cool to uh, <laughs> it would be so cool to go in that direction, but it also really depends uh, how how people like the game and what kind of thing they would like yeah. to see. So, yeah, I I need to see first how the Kickstarter is doing and then uh, go from there and see also what the people uh, would would prefer. I think, yeah, that's also a good thing about us being quite a small um, team. Is that um, yeah we can be flexible and we can really listen to our backers. Like if maybe yeah. we can even do like a rotation uh, for the backers, what they would enjoy the most, and then go from there. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's very. You guys are very accessible. I mean, even the fact that we're able to do this interview, you guys are just there. Uh, I know you want to be a part of the community, so uh, it's going to be really fun to see kind of how it all plays out with the Kickstarter. I'm really looking forward to it. I asked about something that you couldn't add into the game, but is there something that you're the proudest that you were able to add or something that you're the happiest with how it worked out in the game? I think, yeah, the game is... Um very unique in many aspects and maybe the proudest thing about it um, is with that the animals have like a, a, a real character um, because we're working on this project for quite some time um, I think like two two and a half years maybe even and the first prototype we made was a very different game and at one point I think people would have enjoyed it a lot because it was more standardized. Um, but we weren't happy with it because the animals felt like you just collect them and place them in your zoo, but you don't need to take care of them. They're just there and people just see them. And uh, it's actually exactly not the thing that we yeah, would like to promote. Um, we want that you kind of uh, think about the needs of the animals and that they play differently. And uh, we basically threw away that prototype and started from scratch, even though it was quite far. And I think many people would have enjoyed it um, too, but it was just not what we wanted. And we then make a, made a huge list with things that we wanted to improve and to be in the game and different in the game. And the main part there was that uh, the re replayability must be high and that the animals need to feel different. And I think we really managed to do that. I think each animal has its um, special character and yeah, like a raccoon is easy to keep. You can keep a lot on one enclosure. Um, on the other hand, yeah, the elephant is just so expensive. You really need to think if you want to get it, but when you get it, you have like so much popularity. So I think, yeah, that's most probably the prize thing that we managed to make animals feel like animals and that it's very satisfying to make them happy and we also see that with some new plays when we made test um, a play testing round there were some people that just they didn't win the game but they really focused on making the animals happy and I, I just thought yeah you can do that as well and you also get bonus by the end so and it also has its importance um, but I think, yeah, it's super nice that we were able to integrate that in, in, in the game in a very nice way. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I really like that the animals can feel so so different from each other, that they're not just, you know, your little wooden figurine is differently shaped, but that you have to think so much more about each animal. And actually, you know, it's such, like you said, it's such a huge investment for some, while others you can just kind of fill in and uh, yes, have in absolutely. Your zoo. And they have different strategies. And I think, yeah, some of the um, conservation animals, maybe some people don't know too much about them. So it's also great that it's in the game and maybe make people aware about that. And uh, yeah, there's all kinds of strategy that you can that you can go with. And it's very balanced. As I said, it took us very long to get it to that point. But now I can really say that it's a well-balanced uh, game. You were talking earlier about the different biomes. You know, you have this, I think you said savanna, tundra, and rainforest. So how does that 
kind of work with the exhibits is do you only have a certain well just tell me about about the biomes and how they work into the game as well like designing I exhibits think, yeah the biomes are not um like it's a it's also nice visually that you can have this distinction between the different animals and their biomes and uh there are certain mechan mechanics that support if you have like um, a mix like the um, education booth you basically place that uh, has mo most effect if you place it in um, <clears throat> besides different biomes so you can teach more to the people basically so mm -hmm. there's not too much of this element in the game where you have to think about how to build your zoo we didn't want to make that part too complicated but there's here and there there is something like the conservation booth needs to be close to a um, an animal species that has conservation values otherwise it doesn't make too much sense or as i said with the educational booth um, that has to be at a place where there's different biomes placed uh, to really have a good effect mm. on, on, on on education so there's a bit here in, of influence but it's not too much can you tell me a little bit, you mentioned those booths. Can you tell me about some of the buildings? Like what kind of buildings are available? Are there food and drink yes. and everything like that as well for guests? Um, we have like three main. Um, maybe I have like something that shows that. Oh, that's very small though. So you have basically, um, again, these three um, categories like in the game you ever have these three categories you have this popularity you have uh, conservation you have your education and basically you have this education um, booths that booth uh, that boosts mm -hmm. your education and um, you have the conservation uh, booths that or centers we call them uh, which boost the conservation and then we have these uh, different parks um, playgrounds and so on who boosts your uh, popularity and uh, these are kind of the three buildings um, that you have in the game and then that kind of uh, fine tunes in what direction you want to go and there's like uh, other buildings that we call commercial buildings that give you money and basically you have uh, mm. food shops and they also play a role with the color. You have one for the jungle, one for the savanna, and one for the border mountain. And so you need to place them next to um, an enclosure that has the uh, um, corresponding biome. So there, this building effect and the okay. biome effect also plays a bit inside. And you have uh, food booths um, too, and you have the souvenir shop um, or zoo shop. And they, yeah give you even more money well it seems like a great game and i'm really looking forward to it. i'm definitely going to be backing you guys on kickstarter i definitely Thank suggest you. anybody <laughs> else who's watching this show <laughs> there should be a link hopefully to your <laughs> kickstarter page i would recommend everybody go out and help this project out so that we can see it i'd love to get a copy of the game i'm really looking forward to playing it and i'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come out with in the future um, is there anything you'd like to kind of say to wrap everything up or say to people who might be interested in backing the Kickstarter or anything like that? I think, yeah, I think people that kind of enjoy uh, games around zoos or that were, yeah, zoo tycoon players, I think they will enjoy the game definitely because you have this kind of simulation and, um, yeah, you can play it with four player, which is also a nice addition. I think those people will enjoy it a lot. And yeah, it would be cool that the project is able to be um, fulfilled, that we can make it. And we are very excited. And yeah, let's see what's what's going to happen. Well, good. Well, I really appreciate you sitting down with me, taking time out of your day. Uh, we're in very different time zones, so I'm glad it worked out. And uh, thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you more in the future and hearing about any updates in the future. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you also, Andrew. It was really nice. It was a nice uh, interview. And uh, wish you also all the best. And yeah, it would be nice uh, to see you on the Kickstarter comment section. <laughs> yeah, I'll <laughs> definitely be there for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Andrew.